What's going on, folks? It's your boy, T. Bloom. I mean, what else is about to happen? Week 7, NFL action coming up. I'm going to give you my predictions, my news, my stats. We got a couple breaking news announcements that just happened yesterday. If you know, you know. If you don't, you're about to find out. So stay tuned. T. Bloom Talk Show coming at you now. All right, so for those who don't know, Christian McCaffrey officially traded to the San Francisco 49ers. Let's just break down those trade details right now. And we'll go over a couple things else because there's a couple questions that I have considering all of this mumbo jumbo that just went down. So here are the deets. Christian McCaffrey from the Panthers goes to the San Francisco 49ers in exchange for the 2023 second round pick, the 2023 third round pick, the 2023 fourth round pick, and a 2024 fifth round pick. Now, for those of you who play Madden, Fuck, that's a steal for Christian McCaffrey. I mean, those fucking picks don't mean shit. But since this is real life, right? This is real life. What does this mean? Is this is this giving up too much for Christian McCaffrey? I mean, and and then this begs another question: Are the Niners now complete? Are can they win a Super Bowl now that they have Christian McCaffrey? Is that all it took for the Niners to become legitimate Super Bowl contenders? I personally thought they were already were. I'm not saying they were the front runners by any means, but I thought they had a, a genuine chance at winning the Super Bowl. They have all the pieces. I mean, not saying they would have, but I'm saying that they they were, you know, a 5%, 10% chance at winning the Super Bowl before Christian McCaffrey. Now that they have him, is that all it took? I'm not too sure. I'm not too sold on that idea. I mean, Christian McCaffrey, as great as he is, a running back is not going to win you a Super Bowl, and especially in this day and age. I mean, yeah, it's nice to have a guy who can do it all at the backfield, but that's not going to take you from here to here, right? It'll take you from here to about here, but it's not like going out and getting a, you know an, a franchise QB or or hell even a um I'd say even a, a star a star defensive player it's just not the type of league we live in anymore you know it used to be a time where running backs were the main focal point right they could bring you to the playoffs bring you to the super bowl and ultimately had a lot more value in the position than what they do nowadays now with that being said let me turn myself up a little bit turn me up son get a shot of the jitter juice Ooh. all right yeah, so with that being said, I mean, where does this leave the Niners? And they're in shambles for the next draft. They don't have the third, the fourth, or the fifth round pick. I mean, like I said, I know in Madden that doesn't really mean much, but in real life, those picks are very valuable, especially when you don't have all three of them in the they actually don't they don't have the second, the third, or the fourth, huh? That's what I said, right? Yeah, they don't have the second, the third, or the fourth. So they're giving up a lot. It seems like they're going full blast for the Super Bowl this year. They, I mean, it doesn't make sense to give up all of that just to not be in Super Bowl hopes this year. Because next year, what are you going to do? You're not going to have very many draft picks, if any at all. Um, And you're going to be left with a, a, a great running back who has a little bit of an injury issue. I know he hasn't got any injuries this year. He has injuries this year, but he hasn't had any major injuries this year. He's been able to avoid those, thank God. But you got to think the psychology behind it is they're going all in for this year, which means what do they think about Trey Lance? If they're going all in for this year, they're already maybe giving up on Trey Lance. Now, I'm just speculating here, just asking questions. Because why would you give up all these picks that could go towards a better team in the future for Trey Lance, some weapons around him, maybe add some defensive pieces. Why would you give all those up in exchange for a running back this year? It's just not, I mean, it makes sense to me if they're going for the Super Bowl this year and they're not too high on Trey Lance. That's my take on it. So, very exciting news though. I'm so glad he did not end up going to the Buffalo Bills because the reports early were that Christian McCaffrey was supposed to go to the Bills. The Bills had interest. And, man, if that Buffalo Bills team were to snag Christian McCaffrey, I would be uh, beside myself. And that would probably have Buffalo leap over the Kansas City Chiefs as the Super Bowl favorites in my eyes. Um, But that's going to do for that segment of the um, 
of the talk show. But we got a lot of games to get through. And by the way, let's just sit back and let's just enjoy this feeling. We're in week seven of the 2022-2023 NFL season. And we're right in the middle of it. I don't know about you guys. Every week, every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, doesn't matter. I am excited because there's always something football to look at. Whether it's Thursday night football. No matter how big of a shit show that's been. News updates, uh, looking forward to Sundays. My Sunday consists of me waking up, sitting down, watching football for about eight to 10 hours a day. And I love it. Some people ask, well, how can you just do that? How can you not just do that? How can you not be fully engaged in what's going on these Sundays? It is the best time of year. I'm living in Washington right now. You know it's the middle of football season when you got rain coming down and it looks like it's 3 p.m. right now when it's goddamn 1230 in the morning, damn near. Not in the morning, but in the afternoon. It's just something about these days that I love and I'm very passionate about. It makes the winters go by faster. It makes the fall go by faster. And I'm just excited. So I just wanted to take this time to really embrace, really feel good about the position we're in right now, middle of football season, because guess what? In two months, three months, February after the Super Bowl, you're going to be missing these days. I know I do all the time. You're going to be missing those Sundays being able to wake up and you know what you're doing for the rest of the day. It's fun. It's a good time. So let's just embrace it right now. Let's enjoy the moment we're in and let's get to these week seven picks. We're going to start it off with the New Orleans Saints. Oh, paper just fell. New Orleans Saints versus the Arizona Cardinals. It just happened last night. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, at T Bloom Talk Show, it's for you fucking tweetaholics out there. If you follow me on Twitter, you know I just picked the Saints to win. Boy, was I wrong. But, I mean, the Saints had it until Andy Dalton threw two pick sixes. It doesn't get any worse than that. And there's something about Andy Dalton that gets a team motivated once he comes in off the bench and he looks good decent or he looks good and then he'll go and do some shit like that and he's done that his whole career whole career and I think it stems from being from Cincinnati I think it all stems from the Marvin Lewis led Cincinnati Bengals that have been you know kind of a headache for Cincinnati fans for a while because I mean he's just undisciplined I mean you can't throw two picks you can't even throw one pick six a game let alone two and then there's a there's a shot a video shot. You guys should go look it up if you have the chance of Andy Dalton. He's walking away with his head down, pissed off, and in the background, it's the goddamn Arizona Cardinals defender diving into the end zone. If you haven't seen it, it's must see, must see TV. Go check it out. It's the funny. It's probably the epitome of Andy Dalton's career in that one shot. Anyway, kind of a shit show last night. At least, it, at least we had some points scored on the board for for. For fuck's sake. I mean, all these other Thursday night games have just been absolutely terrible. But, um, yeah, anyway, let me just get to this. I'm trying to get to the injury report so I can see who's all injured. Come on, come on. Ooh, Jadavion Clowney, questionable against the Ravens. We'll get to that in a second. Come on, man. Why do they make this so stupid? Why do they make it so, so stupid? Come on, where's the injury report? There's a depth chart. There it is, there it is, there it is. All right, we're finding it, we're finding it. Sorry, folks, should have been ready. Okay, so we're going to get into the first game I'm going to predict, which is the Atlanta Falcons versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, on paper, this doesn't look very good. doesn't look like a fun matchup at all, and I'll tell you this, it's not going to be. Specifically because the Bengals had the eighth most passing yards per game. Now, that's not number one. It's not number two. Hell, it's not even top five. But where the value comes in in that is Atlanta gives up the second most passing yards per game at 281.2 yards. So you couple that with the turf. Bengals love to fly. They just came off a big win against uh, New Orleans in New Orleans last week. And actually, this is in Cincy. No turf. No turf here unless they have turf. Not indoors or anything. But Atlanta gives up a lot of passing yards, and Cincinnati loves to pass the ball. They got the eighth most passing yards per game, and they've just been on a run so far in these last couple games. So the Bengals have the edge there. Now, the Bengals give up 3.7 sacks per game, but Atlanta 
is last in the league in sacks per game. They only get 1.3. So, you know, I can see them probably getting three sacks on Burrow, but it's not like he's going against this tremendous pass rushing team that's just going to keep getting after getting after him and getting after him. It's just not the case. Um, on the other hand, the Bengals don't give up many rushing TDs, and we know how much Atlanta loves to run the ball. They actually give up .5 per game, so less than a touchdown per game. I'm not sure where that ranks in the league, but they don't give up many rushing touchdowns. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, so the Bengals give up the sixth least rushing yards per game on defense, which is 89 per game. Um, and the Falcons, on the other hand, they give up the ninth least rushing yards per game in 104. However, the Bengals don't even rely on their run game anyway, so that's really not going to be a big deal. Um, they're used to moving the ball through the air. We know how dynamic that Joe Burrow, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, we know how dynamic they can all be. Tyler Boyd, they're not going to really rely on the run game anyway, so all that good run D that Atlanta's going to bring to the table, it's not going to really be for much because they're used to not being able to run the ball in general, and they still do well in the passing game. Um, yeah, so another stat for the, the passing on for the Bengals, they have the fifth most passing TDs per game with two per game. And the Atlanta Falcons have the eighth most opponent passing TDs per game with just 1.7. So I think the, I think the numbers are really easy here. The Bengals are probably going to win this. And I'd say probably by more than a touchdown. Some reason the Bengals love to stick in games, love to be in ball games this year, even though they have no business being in them, which is, which is good. They love to fight. I just don't see a way that the Atlanta Falcons can beat the Cincinnati Bengals this week. So I'm going to roll with the Bengals. We're not going to do over-unders. I'm sick and tired of over-unders. I'm done with them. So we're not going to do over-unders this week. Maybe they'll come back next week. We'll see. But next game, Detroit Lions versus the Dallas Cowboys. Now, based on the record, this may seem like an obvious, obvious, you know, pick the Cowboys. But here's where it gets interesting. The Lions are last in rushing yards per game, right? With just, uh, in terms of defense, they give up the most rushing yards per game. They give up 5.5 yards per carry. That's third worst in the league. They give up two rushing TDs per game. That's last in the league. And they give up 167.6 rushing yards per game. Now, the Cowboys, they're middle of the pack in terms of rushing yardage and rushing stats. They get 118 per game. That's 16th. They get... Less than a touchdown per game on the ground. I mean, which one? What point is that? Not sure where that ranks in terms of uh, the NFL, but it's pretty middle of the pack. Nothing spectacular, but they're going to be going against a defense that can't really stop the run. So if there's any time for the Cowboys to pick up the running game and get Ezekiel Elliott going and Tony Pollard, Dak's coming back, it's going to be this game. And you couple that if Dak comes back as he should. Which, by the way, I have questions about because it's not like he put up this excellent performance in the opener against Tampa Bay. He really struggled. So we'll see just how you know how much they use him coming out right off the bat, coming off the injury. They might want to work it in kind of slow for him, right? So they might be running the ball a lot here. So if there's an over-under on a certain player in terms of the, the betting standards, you might want to bet for the Cowboys rushers to get a little bit more than what the over-under's at. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, the Lions, they gave up 261 passing yards per game, which is the 26th best in the league, which means they're, they're on the bottom 10 of the league in terms of passing yards per game. The Cowboys also give up 183.5 passing yards per game, which is the fourth best in the game right now. We know the Lions, they love to stretch the ball down the field, especially this Lions team this year. That's how they win their games. They throw the ball, they put up a ton of points on offense. They didn't do so hot against the Patriots a couple weeks ago. 29-0, I believe the score was. We'll see if they can rebound, but I'm just going to go with the trustworthy team right here. Cowboys, they're coming off a loss to the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Cooper Rush had a terrible game. Even if Cooper Rush is playing in this game and Dak doesn't come back, I can still take the Cowboys. They're just a more consistent team, more solid foundation, right? They got the defense. They're struggling a little bit on offense, but they still got a lot of key talent, key players there. I just it's hard for me to live in a world where the Lions beat the Cowboys this week. So we're gonna roll with the Dallas Cowboys. And let's see if they got any injuries on their team. 
Dallas Cowboys. Come on. Doesn't look like any major injuries. Dak Prescott looks to be off of the injury report. And then we got the Detroit Lions. I didn't see much on the Detroit side. Oh, DeAndre Swift, questionable. DJ Chark, questionable. Josh Reynolds, questionable. Jameson Williams, questionable. I mean, so much of their offense is questionable. It just doesn't look like a, a, a good day for the Detroit Lions to win a game. And that's okay because they're the Detroit Lions and no one expects much out of them anyway. Next game, Indianapolis Colts versus the Tennessee Titans. Now, this is an interesting game because, one, the Colts are probably the most inconsistent, unpredictable team in the league. They seem to, you know, you could, it's hard to guess what they're going to do each week. I mean, from beating the Chiefs in week two or week three to coming back on the Jaguars last week, Matt Ryan putting up or throwing up 58 times a game and winning the game. It's just, it's very unpredictable to say what they're going to do. Now, does that mean they're going to lose? Who knows? That's what unpredictability comes with. You just don't know. Here's some stats. The Colts, <clears throat> on offense, have 266.2 passing yards per game. That's fifth best in the league. The Titans give up 287.6 passing yards per game. That's the worst in the league. You got to think the Colts are going to be able to move the ball through the air, right? They got Michael Pittman Jr. back. Paris Campbell's there. Um... Everyone's healthy, it seems to be, on offense. So they're probably going to be able to move the ball through the air. Also, coupled with that, the Colts average 1.3 TDs per game through the air. That's the 16th best in the league, middle of the pack. On the other hand, the Titans, they gave up 2.5 passing TDs per game. That's 31st best in the league, which means they're second to last. Now, the Titans, as bad of a passing defense that they have, they have an even they have just as, as good of a run defense as bad as their pass defense is, if that makes sense. They have a great run D. They don't give up touchdowns. They don't give up many, very many yards. But the Colts don't run the ball anyway. Even with Jonathan Taylor, they're almost dead last in terms of yards per game. I mean, they struggle through on the they struggle on the ground. So it's not like they're getting anything taken away from them with the Titans' great run D. They're going to eat up the Titans passing D all game long unless something changed in the bye week for the Tennessee Titans, which does it ever. I mean, we all say these bye weeks, oh, it's a nice time to go and recover, work through some stuff, get some rest. The only thing I think a bye week does for a team is get some rest. Ultimately, I think it makes them more rusty because you fall out of a rhythm. You fall out of a rhythm. Every Sunday you, you play, you have your routine every day of the week. You fall out of that during the bye week. So that's at least my opinion on it. So I don't think the Colts are going to have much trouble getting the ball through the air against the Titans. Let's look at the other side of the ball. On defense, the Colts average 202 passing yards per game. That's 10th best in the league. They give up 121 rushing yards per game. That's the 21st best in the league. So they don't have necessarily an elite defense. They have a decent defense. It just depends on which Indianapolis Colts team is going to show up. Okay, where am I going with this? Right. On offense, the Titans average 175 yards per game through the air, which is 28th best in the league, so they don't really they don't throw the ball very well. But they average 102 rushing yards per game in the league, which is 21st best. So they don't do much well on offense. I mean, what what's going on with this Titans team? They used to be one of the not scarier offenses, but they used to at least be able to run the ball well, right? At least play great D. I mean, and they do play great D, but only in the uh, only on the ground. So both these teams just seem inconsistent. What I'm gonna roll with on this one pretty much is the Colts have lost the last four to Tennessee. Hard to see any division team losing five games in a row to another division opponent. That's why I'm gonna roll with the Indianapolis Colts, and I'm probably gonna be wrong on this one somehow some way the Indianapolis Colts is not gonna they're not gonna show up and the Titans are gonna blow them out or something but I'm gonna roll with the Colts that's just what I came up with I, I can't go any other direction I can't really trust the Tennessee Titans this year I mean Mike Vrabel he's a great coach and everything but I mean it's just nothing nothing p poking out this year for the Tennessee Titans with me like they have at least last year 
at least the last couple of seasons. Okay, next game. Cleveland Browns versus the Baltimore Ravens. I'm going to break it down for you like this. The Browns can't stop the run. The Ravens can run the shit out of the ball. Here's some stats. The Browns give up 131.5 rushing yards per game. That's 24th in the league. Trash. The Ravens run 155.7 yards per game on the ground. That's sixth best in the league. What do the Browns do well? They run the ball. What do the Ravens do well on the defensive side of the ball? They stop the run. Ravens, 103 rushing yards per game. That's seventh best in the league on defense. So it's simple mathematics. The Ravens can run the ball. The Cleveland Browns can't stop the run, or at least very well. The Browns run the ball very well, and the Ravens stop the run very well. So I'm just going to go with that. I mean, the Ravens are going to win this one, especially coming off that loss that they just had against the um, against the Giants. Another two-possession lead blown in the fourth quarter for the Ravens. Don't get me wrong. I'm the happiest motherfucker in the world for that. But you got to... What's going on, Lamar? MVPs don't do that. MVPs don't give up two possession, two plus possession leads in the fourth quarter in twice in the last three weeks. You just don't see that. You're not going to get votes for being an MVP if you're doing that. And Harbaugh, what the fuck's going on? You're the head coach. This is falling more on you than it is Lamar Jackson. Trust me, I have the utmost respect for John Harbaugh. Battle that guy many times. Through the TV, but you know what I mean. Same shit, fanship. Another jitter juice. Uh. So yeah, we're gonna go with the Baltimore Ravens. Excuse me, I'm gonna go blow my nose. It'll be one second. Oh, sorry about that, folks. Rainy season means snuffy noses, sniffy noses, fucking wazies, woozies, and little boozies. Anyway, back to it. Next game. New York Giants versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is going to be an interesting matchup, kind of, because is New York for real? And the way you answer that question is you backtrack on their schedule. They just beat the Ravens, came back two possessions. Well, are the Ravens for real? Because they just gave up two games, granted one went to the Bills, where they were up by two possessions. They gave up the fucking lead in the fourth. So... Let's backtrack even further. They lost to the Cowboys. Well, the Cowboys have been looking pretty good. They just lost to the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Who else do they lose to? They lost to, oh yeah, they lost to the Tampa Bay Bucks early in the season. So, I mean, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sold on the New York Giants. And can you blame me, fucking Daniel Jones? You mean to tell me Daniel Jones just somehow got good and went to a 5-1 and one style quarterback? I don't know about that. I need to see more. I need to Richard Seymour. You guys like that. And on the other hand, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they're the, probably the most inconsistent team outside of the Indianapolis Colts. I mean, God, this, this is a tough one. Not because it's a great matchup, but because you just don't fucking know. You just don't know with these guys. Let's take some stats. Giants on offense average 163 yards running per game. Fourth best in the league. Jags. They only give up 89 rushing yards per game. That's the third best in the league on defense. So you got a clash of the fucking of the Titans right there. Immovable object meets a fucking oh, what's that? What's that saying? Immovable object meets an unstoppable force. Who's gonna win? I don't know. Let's take a look at the other side of the ball. On defense, the Giants. They give up 194 passing yards per game. That's the eighth best in the league, and it's close. It is close to being top five. I'll tell you that. The Jags, they're just inconsistent on offense. They're not great at anything. They're not bad at anything. They're just fucking inconsistent as shit. And for that reason, I will take the New York Giants to win this game in Jacksonville. They're playing just better football. They've been playing pretty good teams. I'm not super I'm not super stoked about picking the Giants. You never can be, especially with DJ Daniel Jones at quarterback. But that's just what I gotta do. New York Giants going to take it in Jacksonville. 
Let's move on to the next game. We got the Green Bay Packers versus the Washington Commanders. Let's take some stats. The Packers have a guy named Aaron Rodgers. The Commanders, they don't. They got zero guys named Aaron Rodgers. They got a guy named Taylor Heineke who's, you know, a poor man's poor man, Aaron Rodgers. And by the way, I used to think I used to think very highly of Taylor Heineke. In that playoff game, not last year, but the last year where they played the uh, the Buccaneers and they almost won that game, I thought Taylor Heineke might be the future for the Commanders. Eh, wrong. That's why I'm sitting here talking on YouTube and not in the NFL coaching. Okay. On defense, the Packers give up 164 passing yards per game. That's the best in the league. They got a great passing defense. And on the other side of the ball, the Commanders don't really throw the ball well. They don't really have much of a... They got good receivers. Terry McLaurin, he's fast. Curtis Samuel, he's decent. But they don't seem to be able to take the top off, especially now that they got Taylor Heineke in at quarterback instead of Carson Wentz. Which, by the way, is that because of an injury? Because if it is, I mean, what more do you need to see from fucking Carson Wentz that... he's out? Yeah, he is injured. What more do you need to see for, as a fucking organization from Carson Wentz to know that he is not going to be able to play for your team the whole season. He gets injured every single year. How can you not take a hint? Every single year Carson Wentz is a starting quarterback. Every single year he gets hurt. Learn. And it's not even like he's the best quarterback. He's not even like when he's on the field he's just abs- absolutely spectacular. No, he's not. Learn. Stop putting him as your starting quarterback and paying him all this money. Roll with a guy like Taylor Heineke. You don't have to pay as much. You'll probably still win the same amount of games. I mean, I, I just I don't get why all these fucking NFL teams just have so much trust in players that obviously cannot stay healthy. That seems to be the most. Um, Jahan Dotson is questionable. Logan Thomas is out. That's going to be bad for the Commanders. Yeah, I. and Packers are coming off a two-game losing streak. Give me the Packers. We're going to roll with them easily. Um, I think they get they right the ship this week against the Commanders. Um, it's not so much that the Packers' offense is going to light them up, but I just think their Packers' defense is enough to win this game for the Green Bay Packers. So this isn't going to be a pretty football game. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, if somehow the Commanders can get a running game going, the Packers give up 135 rushing yards per game, which ranks 27th in the league, which brings them 8th worst in the league, or 5th worst in the league, excuse me. But I think the D will win this game for Green Bay. Not much else to say. Let's look at their... Uh, let's see who they got injured. Green Bay Packers. Randall Cobb out. Oh, that sucks. Christian Watson out, which, by the way, I made a bet with one of my Green Bay friends that before the season started, he said that Christian Watson will be higher on the Rookie of the Year ratings than any Pittsburgh Steeler on the roster. That includes Kenny Pickett, and that includes George Pickens. So, I mean, that's a stupid bet, right? It's only for 5 bucks or 10 bucks or whatever, but, I mean, that's a stupid bet for him, right? Because Christian Watson, I haven't even heard that guy's name all season. Um, other than that, Green Bay seems to be locked, loaded, ready to go. All systems go for Green Bay. We're going to move on to the next game, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Carolina Panthers. Let's just start it off with looking at Tampa's injury report. Julio Jones out. When is that guy going to play? And here's another perfect example. Julio Jones will not last a season. He won't. He never has and he never will. Maybe he has back in the day. But lately, I can't remember the last season Julio Jones has ever, ever finished a season fully healthy. And it's not a knock on him. I mean, wear and tear, it happens. Durability is not for everyone. It doesn't come with everyone. It's actually a really, 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 it's not even a skill. It's a really good trait to have. It's one of the higher values of traits because if you're not available, what's the point of all that talent? So Julio Jones is out. Cameron Brate's out. Shaq Mason, right guard, questionable. Carlton Davis the third, questionable. I don't think it's going to matter very much. I mean, Tampa Bay, they just came off a loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers where Honestly, we didn't see the best Tampa Bay Buccaneers in terms of the Pittsburgh Steelers. We saw a very shaved down, worn out, mentally Tom Brady who 
we didn't see the best. Luckily, we, we didn't see the best Buccaneers. We got the win. Tom Brady's not feeling good about that. I can guarantee you that. I can guarantee you Tom Brady's not feeling good about that. And he's he's going to be looking at the Panthers like some fucking like some fresh meat, like some fresh vegan food that Tom Brady's into. Maybe some avocado toast. Who knows what that guy's into nowadays. Maybe he's just letting it go. He's like, fuck it, I lost Giselle. You know, fuck it, I'm, I'm going to start eating meat or something. I don't know, speculation. On the other hand, Baker Mayfield's doubtful. That means P.J. Walker's going to come off. I'm pretty sure Sam Darnold just got lifted off the IR, but it still says he's on IR, so I'm not too sure with that. P.J. Walker looks to be running the helm. It's really not going to matter. I mean, they got a lot of people on defense that are questionable. They just got rid of Christian McCaffrey. I think they're in full tank mode. I don't see the Carolina Panthers having any shot at beating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this week, so we're going to roll with Tampa Bay. And we're going to move on to the next game, the New York Jets versus the Denver Broncos. This is where it gets interesting because, we're, I mean, just like the other New York team, how good are they? How fucking good are they? They just beat the Packers, which is their biggest test, I think, this year. Um, let's look at their schedule. They lost to the Ravens in week one. They beat the Browns in week two in that fucking shootout. Shout out Joe Flacco for getting that done. Lost to Cincinnati, beat Miami, beat Green Bay, beat Pittsburgh. Honestly, I hope the New York Jets are for real because of Pittsburgh, we easily could have beat them. Easily could have beat them. And we were a goal line stop away from beating them. So I hope they're for real because that just makes it seem like we're, you know, pretty decent as well. This is going to be another test, kind of, sort of, you'd think, because the Denver Broncos are not who we thought they were. Russell Wilson is not who we thought he was. He is in terms of cringiness, but he is not the player we thought we were going to see coming in to this season. So, inconsistency with Denver, but Denver's got a nasty D. I mean, a fucking straight nasty defense. Um, New York versus the Denver Broncos. This is tough. This is a tough one. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay on the uh, the up and up. I'm gonna say New York takes this one. I don't think it's going to be a blowout by any means. It's gonna be a close game. I can see the under hitting for sure. What is it? The under's 39 and a half points. I can see it being 10 to 13, maybe six to three going into the fourth quarter. Something real stank. But ultimately, I think the New York Jets are for real. I think they're gonna win this game and get on that four game winning streak. I mean, when's the last time the Jets had a four game winning streak? They've probably had three four-game losing streaks before the last time they had their four-game winning streak, if that makes sense. It might be the Mark Sanchez era. That might be the last time they had a four-game winning streak, if they even had one then. Huh, I don't know. But I'm not going to pick the Denver Broncos. They look like they're in shambles. Russell Wilson, I mean, like I said on my last podcast, where the fuck are we riding to, dude? No one knows because you're not going where we thought they were going. Next game, Houston Texans versus or yeah, Houston Texans versus the Las Vegas Raiders. Let's look at their injuries real quick. Houston Texans. Uh, first of all, I'm just gonna say it. I don't think the Texans are gonna win. I think the Raiders are gonna win. And notice how I didn't say I think the Raiders are gonna win first. I just don't think the Texans are gonna win any game. Like ever. I know they've already won one, but I just don't think that they're gonna. I'm never gonna pick them to win a game. They look to be fully healthy, with the exception of Jonathan Greenyard. Questionable. They got a lot of people on IR, but it's really not going to matter when you're going against the Las Vegas Raiders. They they just came off a bye. They're probably going to be a little bit shaky, a little bit rusty. They'll probably turn this into a game when it has no business being a game. They got Mac Hollins, a receiver who's questionable. Hunter Renfro's questionable. Darren Waller's questionable. And Jayon Brown, linebacker's questionable. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Las Vegas Raiders. Not going to think about this one too much. I mean, the fucking Houston Texans are a shit show. And honestly, I don't think they'll ever win a Super Bowl. There, I said it. Sorry, Houston Texans fan. I don't think you guys are ever going to win a Super Bowl. Just don't. Maybe I'm going to be wrong. Maybe in 40 years, you can replay this clip when you guys finally do it. Finally get your first Super Bowl when every other team has at least six. Maybe. You can replay this clip and show me. But I'm willing to die on that. Really to die on that, uh, I don't even know what the fucking saying is called. We're going to move on to the next game. The Seattle Seahawks versus the Los Angeles Chargers. Seattle's been shocking everybody this year with how well they've been playing. 
and how well they've been playing against high-level competition. They just got word, um, what's his name? Travis Homer's on IR. Who else is on IR? What's his name? Rashard Penny, he's on IR again. I mean, his career's pretty much done. Uh, Tyler Lockett's questionable. Penny Hart's questionable. Other than that, they look pretty healthy. On the other hand, you got the... Um, you got the Los Angeles Chargers, who just came off that um, Monday night win against the Denver Broncos. They got the job done. wasn't easy. wasn't perfect, but they got the job done. Keenan Allen, he might make his first appearance this game. You got Joshua Palmer. He's questionable. Mike Williams, I mean, damn, what a revitalization of a career. For a second there, we thought he might be a bust. The guy's playing out of his mind today, or this year. Sebastian Joseph Day, he's questionable. They look to be pretty much locked and loaded, ready to go. We're going to roll with the Los Angeles Chargers here. I think the Seattle Seahawks come back down to earth a little bit. I don't think it's going to be a blowout by any means. Seattle seems to stick around in all these games that they've been playing. But for how long can they keep it up? Geno Smith's been playing decent, but, I mean, how long can you keep that up? Next game, Kansas City Chiefs for the San Francisco 49ers. Super Bowl rematch from two years ago. What's going to happen? Well, San Francisco... Just got Christian McCaffrey. He's got about two days to uh, learn the playbook. I don't think he's going to play much in the first first game. And why would he? I honestly, I would probably, I wouldn't even suit him up. Why? Don't even suit him up. No need. No need for him to get hurt on a waste of a, a game where he's probably not going to do much anyway. Left tackle Trent Williams is questionable for the Niners. Right tackle Mike McClinchy is also questionable for the uh, Niners. They got a D. Andy Bookham's questionable. Nick Bose is questionable. Armstead's questionable. Traverse Tra- Ward's questionable. Safety Hufanga, questionable. Jimmy Ward, questionable. They got a lot of people questionable on their defense, which is going to make me lean towards the Kansas City Chiefs if I haven't already been leaning towards the Kansas City Chiefs already, which I have. Um, where's it at? It's in San Francisco. I don't really think that's gonna matter. Yeah, you know what? Give me the Chiefs. I just I'm not gonna take San Francisco. I'm not gonna take anybody to beat the Chiefs, especially after a loss. I can't remember the last time Kansas City's lost twice in a row, and that'd be a weird record for them to be four and three. I don't think they've ever been four and three with Patrick Mahomes on their team. But he fucking knows, mate. San Francisco. Don't think they they forgot about what happened in that Super Bowl. They were up two possessions in the fourth quarter, and they let them come back. That's not a good feeling. Not a good feeling. You got to think there's still a sour taste left in their mouth. Jimmy G's still at quarterback, so he's got to be proving a point. But I don't know if you really want Jimmy G in the mindset of trying to prove a point because he might just try and prove too many points and throw too many interceptions. But ultimately, we're rolling with the Kansas City Chiefs with this one. Not much to talk about after that. Anyway, next game, which is the game that I know you've all been waiting for, the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Miami freaking Dolphins. Tua Tagovailoa is back. Kenny Pickett, he's going to be playing. It's going to be two young quarterbacks versus two young uh, versus each other. I mean, what's going to happen? On one hand, you got the Miami Dolphins, who have a very explosive offense, can light it up with any team in the league against a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers, who love to play down to their competition but love playing up to their competition. We've seen it last week against Tampa, and I know I said, well, we didn't see a full Tampa doesn't matter. We still played up to a team that people think is a Super Bowl contender, potentially. Not by any means a Super Bowl favorite, but a potential Super Bowl contender. Probably going to make the playoffs this year. Anytime you got Brady, you got a chance, right? Steelers took him out. We took him down. And we did it with Mitch Trubisky at quarterback for a whole half. So maybe we got something. And I said it on my last podcast. Every win we get towards or every 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 win we'll get with this winning streak is just going to make it easier and easier for people to believe that we got what it takes to at least make the playoffs but injuries we looked we seem to be back i mean the only injury we have on defense right now is a kilo witherspoon who's doubtful which by the way wasn't playing very well anyway this year young corner stepped up last last week and um Fuck it, roll with them again. What's the worst that can happen? I mean, you get blown out by the Miami Dolphins on Sunday Night Football, oh, whoop de doo We ain't getting blown out. Pittsburgh, Miami, oh, it's tough. Let's look at their injuries. Mm, Jalen Waddle questionable. Their tight ends questionable. Teron Armstead, left tackle questionable. Greg Little, right tackle questionable. Couple people on their defense questionable. I mean... 
If there's a time to beat the the Miami Dolphins, it's got to be this week in Miami. Guys, God, I really don't want to go with the Miami Dolphins. I mean, you know what? I went with Tampa Bay last week, and the Steelers won. So I'm going to roll with that. I'm going to go Miami Dolphins this week. I think they get us. I think they snag us. It's going to be tough for us to beat them. Tough for us to put up enough points to beat them. I don't know if our defense can hold them. Tyreek Hill lights us up every time we play him. So, yeah, I'm going to roll with Miami Dolphins, but you better bet your fucking sweet ass I'm going to be showing up at 10 a.m., terrible towel in hand, waving it around like a son of a gun, watching my – or actually not 10 a.m. At 5 p.m., I might be just sloshed as Sid the Sloth, ready for the Pittsburgh Steelers to come out that tunnel and beat the Miami Dolphins on primetime football, baby. We're rolling with Kenny Pickett. I think Miami's going to win. But you know I'm hoping Pittsburgh Steelers are going to win. So don't you fucking doubt that for a second. Next game, the Monday night game, Chicago Bears with the New England Patriots. Man, who the fuck came up with that game for Monday night? What the fuck? Um, that one, we're going to roll with New England. They're a way better team. Chicago, they can't pass the ball more than six yards. They, they run the ball so much, it's so easy to stop them on D. I think Belichick's going to have a great game plan for Justin Fields. It doesn't matter who's starting at quarterback for the New England Patriots. Zappy, Jones, fuck, they can put in their goddamn kicker. It doesn't matter. New England Patriots, by a mile. And that's going to do it for my picks today. Another thing I wanted to say, though, what was on my mind? Oh, right, corporate announcement. Every week... For the last six months, I have a Zoom meeting with corporate from the T-Bloom headquarters located in Arizona. And we talk and we go over you know, how the show's doing, how certain things are going, numbers, this, that. I don't want to bore you with the ins and outs. But something that happened this week is something that hasn't happened Ever for me personally, and it's 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 personal for all the T Bluminites out there. I share this with you in complete honesty, complete transparency. On YouTube, the T Bloom Entertainment page has forty seven subscribers, which is good. Don't get me wrong; I love every person who subscribed. We've got plus in the last two weeks. I think we've got uh, thirteen more subscribers, which is amazing. Which is amazing. Thirteen more people coming out subscribing. Possibly tuning into the talk show. I absolutely love it. But due to, you know, we're in a little bit of a recession right now in the country, right? Prices going up, you know, hours going down. You know what I mean? In so facto, I don't, I wanna, I don't know the economics of it. It also is hitting corporate, T Bloom corporate offices in Arizona. They're pretty much giving me an ultimatum. By the end of the month of October, they want to see at least 100 subscribers on YouTube. Now, I told them, hey, it takes time. We got to, you know, take the wins as they come. We'll get there. We'll get there. They don't want to hear it. They gave me a deadline at the end of October. If I do not, if T Bloom Entertainment, if T Bloom Nation, T Bloom and Nights in its own, if we don't collectively get 100 subscribers on YouTube, there's a solid chance that this talk show will no longer be able to be funded. And that means the end of the T Bloom talk show in its entirety. Now, I don't want to scare you guys with that nonsense or any stuff like that because I believe we can do it. But I just wanted to put it out there that we need these subscribers. So please, for the love of God, tell a friend to tell a friend, to tell their mom, to tell their husband, to tell their daughters. Make it happen. We need these numbers to come up so I can keep delivering news and keep delivering these infos, these these predictions to you every single week. So there, there it is. There's my corporate update for the week. Let's get these subscribers up. If you haven't already subscribed, just get a subscription. I mean, sign up for a YouTube account. It takes like two seconds. If you have a Gmail, you already have an account pretty much. Sign in. Give me a subscription. Give me a like. Give me a comment. Whatever. At the end of the day, I do this for you guys, and I have fun doing it. So take a stand off or take a step off of my soapbox right there. That's going to do it for this special edition, I would say. This week 7 edition of the T Bloom Talk Show. 
I appreciate everyone who's tuning in. Remember, you can follow me on Instagram at T underscore Bloom 253. I'll put it right there. Or you can find me on Twitter at T Bloom Talk Show. Or if you're a TikToker, one of those fucking goddamn millennials, I don't even know if that's right. If you're a TikToker, you can find me at T Bloom ENT. Or what's the other one? I think that's it. Oh, yeah, obviously YouTube, T Bloom ENT. TikToker at T Bloom ENT. It's been fun, folks. I love giving the predictions. Hopefully, we run the table this week. We go 16 and 0. I come back next week. Boom. T Bloom's got 100 fucking subscribers, and we're rolling, and we shove it up corporate's ass. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, T Bloom. See you next week. Ah.